Hi, this is Ted. I'm having a hard time getting a video out for some reason. I put one out this morning, and I think 40 of you saw it, and I just thought it was so bad I had to take it back. So I got rid of it. All right. And, you know, I'm talking about Chris Valentin, who is the associate pastor of Bethel Church in Redding, California, and he's under Bill Johnson. And I wanted to critique his message, but I'm thinking, you know, come on, a lot of pastors are just as bad at preaching, including myself. I've had some bad messages. But as a pastor of a large church who's being viewed by hundreds of thousands sometimes, or tens of thousands, I really expected more. And I really did expect a better prepared message. I was disappointed in that respect. Um, however, that being said, there are two things that really stood out that really I want to talk about. All right, first of all is his thinking that just because he saw so many connections, so many people preaching on the same thing, that this must mean it's from God. And he wants to let everybody know this message is from God. Not me, God. God gave me this song. God gave me this message. And now you're supposed to, because of that, you, oh, this has to be everything I have to pay total attention to because it is God speaking himself. And that's equal to the Bible, isn't it? How I got the message is part of the message. Uh, uh, on Thursday morning, I got up early and I was teaching that day on, uh, in school ministry and also knew I was teaching this week and I hadn't settled on where, what I was gonna share. And so I was just in the bathtub where the Lord meets me uh, and I was just praying and just, Lord, what, what do you, give me, uh, give me clarity about what I'm supposed to share. And I immediately heard um, the prodigal son. Talk about the prodigal son. So I was reading about the prodigal son and I had some notes on the prodigal son because I had preached that here before and, shared about the prodigal son story. And so um, I came to the prayer meeting. There's a government prayer meeting that we, that we started a while back. And I walked into the meeting a few minutes late, and, the, and a lady was up there leading prayer, and she was reading the prodigal son story as I walked in. Wow. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, confirmation. And so that was great. And so they said, one of the, one of the guys like, hey, do you want to lead prayer? And so I'm like, yeah, I'm, this is what I'm going to preach on this weekend. I'm super excited about this subject. And so I got up, and I... I was talking about the prodigal son uh, story about uh, Malachi four fathers coming home, and I and I had some notes, so I, I looked at them real quick, and I was I read the seven negative statistics about what happens in a fatherless environment. Like what is the what is the what is the uh, effect of fatherlessness in society? And I read them, and as I read them, I got to like the third one, and it popped up on the screen. The the seven the very seven I was reading. I'm like, well, how did they do that so quickly? That's cool. So when I got off the, uh, off the stage and got done leading that prayer, I said, man, how did you get statistics up there so fast? He goes, oh, the Lord put it on my heart last night to put the statistics up. The night before, I'm like, this is getting good. <laughs> so as, as I'm talking to him, uh, a gal who leads uh, vac vacation Bible school comes over and she said, I told the prodigal son story yesterday morning. That was the subject of a whole vacation Bible school yesterday. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Lord, thank you. So then I got to the, after that meeting, I went right into the, the BSSM manager's meeting, and I was sharing, we kind of sharing testimonies, and I've shared this testimony. I'm like, that's amazing. The Lord's really on this subject. And, uh, and one of the gals, I think it may have been Haley or, or Leslie, said, I preached the prodigal son story yesterday to our online school. And someone else goes, yeah, and I preached it in school ministry. So I'm thinking, if I don't preach that today, I may die. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, if I go into a dealership, in a car dealership, and I see this great Mustang GT, and I have all kinds of money so I can afford it, this is not true, it's the real, the real case, but let's just say for uh, argument's sake, I have a lot of money, I want to buy a Mustang GT, or I have enough money anyway to buy a Mustang GT. Anyway, I go in, I go into the dealership, and I didn't intend buying the GT, but I saw that. I thought, wow, I've never seen that before. i got to get this thing. 
And so I buy it, and as soon as I get it off, onto the freeway, I see another Mustang GT. A little later, another one. <laughs> and before long, I'm realizing these are not all that uncommon. What happened? Focus. Focus. My focus was never on the Mustang GT until I bought it or until, for some reason, I was directed to that. And Luke 15 is a very popular message, so you're going to hear it a lot in certain circles. So I'm not, I'm not going to say neither here nor there. Nevertheless, don't be too surprised if you get a lot of coincidences with something that is very popular. Now, however, if he's going to be talking about some strange passage that no preacher ever preaches about, and then all of a sudden he sees quite a few people doing it in the same week and talking about it, maybe there's something there. Uh, maybe they're all connected somehow. Somebody preached to all, all of them, and they're uh, contemplating it without realizing it. There's different, different reasons. Kenneth Copeland does the same kind of stuff, only he does it a little different. Kenneth Copeland likes to talk to God. During the middle of his messages, he'll say things like, Is that true, God? Is that right? I haven't thought of that. <laughs> In the middle of his messages. But that way he reminds people, This message is not from me, it's God, so pay attention. I wanted you to see that tonight. Hallelujah. There was another incident. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Lord, I need to ask you a question. Am I ever going to do this here? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, all right. Praise. Yeah, this part of it. Okay. In the name of Jesus. So. <clears throat> okay. If you notice, he looks behind him. Because God is right behind him, talking to him. Sometimes when this happens, he'll say something like, I haven't heard that before. Well, of course not, because God is talking to you, and God doesn't always tell us what we've heard before. He'll say other things as well to let you know that he is talking to God right in the middle of his messages. At the end of his message, uh, he after he goes through Luke 15, he talks about the Reformation coming, and he claims this is going to be bigger Bigger than promise keepers. <laughs> I was a little blown away by that. No way. A revival bigger than promise keepers? No, that can't be. <laughs> that would be earth shattering. But sure enough, the revival coming. Actually, I think you might have even mentioned the Reformation. I'm not sure. I don't remember. i got to go back over that. Anyway, the revival coming is bigger than that of the promise keepers. Uh, now, I know that it's very popular among the charismatic circles to believe that there's this big, huge revival coming and bigger than we've ever seen. I would say one thing about that. Don't hold your breath, okay? <laughs> this is Ted. You all have a good one. <laughs>